begin to form. Sulfur, argon, chlorine, potassium, calcium, scandium. The pace of this gets faster and faster. Back in the middle, silicon is starting to burn at three and a half billion degrees. Stupendous temperature. It makes titanium, vanadium, chromium, manganese, cobalt, nickel, and iron. Iron is really the end of the road. It's, it's sort of the nuclear turnip out of which you just cannot squeeze uh, anymore. It's the end of the game. A star that has relied on fusion has come to the point where it has nothing more to spin. The star is suddenly caught in a disaster. There's radiation going out from the outside, but deep in the inside, there's uh, no more fuel. Iron can't fuel the stellar furnace. And so, when a star builds up too much iron, it dies. The core collapses, it bounces, and it begins to move out, first slowly and then faster and faster. And that sends a very sharp wave back out through the star. And now, what was falling down is going out, the whole thing's blowing up. And you've made a supernova. The supernova explosion can be as bright as four billion stars like the sun. A stupendous explosion. Such outrageous energies overcome the iron barrier cooking atoms into all the rest of the elements on the periodic table. So starting down here, you can go copper, zinc, gallium, germanium, arsenic, zirconium, niobium, molybdenum, strontium, rotation, eternium, chlorine, iron, xenon, francium, barium, lapidum, deuterium, indium, xenon, protonium, uranium. Done. That's enough elements. We are all stardust. Carbon in our bodies, the iron in our blood, the calcium in our bones. Every last atom was formed in a star. But it's not that simple. No one star can produce more than just a dusting of heavy elements. So, to create an environment friendly to life, the universe had to find a way to concentrate the good stuff. Which it did in a process that is remarkably like the way Chef Michael Romano cooks up a bowl of soup. As you know, a cornerstone of great cooking is a rich soup. And all soup starts with water. So let's add some water in the pot. Mm -hmm. In this culinary cosmos, these ingredients stand in for the first stars, each flavoring the surrounding broth just a little bit. And then we need heat, which we have. There's no shortage of heat in the cosmos, it turns out. <laughs> That's a good thing. In the broth left behind by the first stars, new stars form. That's this second round of ingredients. And as they simmer, the interstellar soup gets stronger and stronger. Look at how rich that's become. I, I, I still can't wait. Yeah, I remember that water that we started with. Right. And look what it's turned into. It's actually thickened and a lot of flavor in there. Mm -hmm. So, I think at this point it has enough flavor to support adding the star of the show, which is our shellfish and fish. Finally, this cosmic soup is nearly ready. To the point where, after bubbling for billions of years, it can support the kind of life that would emerge on Earth. And there you go, Neil. That's for you. Thank you, Michael. Enjoy it. Thank you. What Michael just did is entirely analogous to what happens in the real universe. 